The following is an 18 PR production. Welcome to the Free Range Texan Podcast. We're kind of an escape hatch for everyday life. We know today's world has issues. Maybe that's just all the more reason to spend some time. So saddle up with a bunch of Free Range Texans. Here's one now. Our host, Michael Sean. Free Range Texan. Episode 52, rolling out into the hearts and minds of that special and growing number of people who listen to our podcast regularly. We really love all of y'all and appreciate each and every one of you. Now, clearly, there are those which would seek to breach our perimeter out yonder here at our studios for one reason or another. Here at the 18PR studios, we know and we assume that all of our listeners know these would be troublemakers who don't listen to our show. If they were regular free-range Texan listeners, they would be aware that our chief of security is always guarding Studio A with Foxy, the Wonder Dog's usual alert and somewhat nasty attitude. Makes our ground zero location for the free-range Texan a pretty safe place. Good dog, Foxy. What a show we've got lined up for you. Sugar Cane Jane, Anthony Crawford, and Savannah Lee, our special guests on our Free Range Texan talent file. They've been working with a mind-spinning lineup of power play artists of one type or another. We'll talk about that coming up. They're really well produced. Let me just say that. And a delight to visit with. Sugarcane Jane, coming up on this episode. Also, Michael Sean's campfire towards the end of the show. So... You're in the right place. I say we just settle up and get ready to ride. We all are aware that our world has changed. The Free Range Texan has one very important message for our United States listeners. Be kind, but with your eyes wide open. Be vigilant. Be ready to guard your freedom. Hey, why don't you spend some time riding with the best little podcast in Texas? The Free Range Texan. Now, I got to tell you, I'm a brand new fan. Uh, Oh, nice. 30 days ago, you weren't on my horizon, you know? Mm -hmm. And and, uh, uh, I I felt like uh, from listening to your music and reading your bio that that, uh, y'all have been involved in this all your life. And uh, but but yeah. there's, there's always going to be people like me, you know. They, <laughs> I should well, I should know these guys. <laughs> well, there's unfortunately there's more of you than the, than the ones that do know us. Trust me, well, Michael. Uh, you know, it's hard. You know, we got three little kids, so it's it's been hard for us to tour uh, a ton, and that's kind of what you have to do to be known across the country. So we do the best we can. We tour as much as we can, but Southern folks. Oh gosh, yes, 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 we are. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> you know no yeah. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be Southern before long. I mean they're yeah. fleeing everywhere. So in the, other words, you're a pro at editing and doing your shows. So oh we, I, I can yes. I can make anybody say anything. <laughs> Awesome. Hey, that's that's 
Hey, you're working for CNN. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Nobody's ever said that to me before. (laughs) And I apologize. (laughs) Dad, (laughs) gummy. You're a riot, man. I love you. Come on. We should be next door neighbors, man. (laughs) Yes, we could. Yes. Oh, man. Okay, so well, here's the, that's the deal. Do you have any questions for me before we start? Uh, no, what, one question kind of is, is like, you're more of a music-based, because we have done, I mean, a lot of people are finding out where we stand on what, the political spectrum. So some things are more political than others, but this one, like you say, this was more down the middle of the road and music and that kind of thing, right? Yes, that's correct. And the interview on Free Range Texans, uh, in fact, most of the time, we don't interview groups. We interview individuals. But but on right. Free Range Texan, it is about the individual. We are interviewing the person when we're all done. All right. Also, there is a blog article uh, at freerangetexan.net. We have a blog where, we, where I always come in and give a lot of personal thoughts, and we show uh, all the pictures we can get our hands on and stuff like that on the blog. And, and put your music video on the blog as well. Of course, the whole purpose of the blog is to cross-promote cross to the podcast. And so that's where we leave them on the blog okay. is now go listen to the podcast, you know. Right, so, right. And we will we will send you pictures and anything you need. So. Michael Stover has done that. Okay. You, you know, I just got to say this. I have worked with people like Michael Stover all of my life. And 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 I'm since I was 13 years old. I'm I'm 66. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you can do the math wow. on that. And and of course it was all just radio back then. But but the idea is I just wanted to tell you if you're hooked up with Michael Stover in any way, he is the best. We are figuring that out. We just found him by chance. Oh, he the guy is golden, man. And when, when he sends me a press kit or anything else, and and we have learned now when we're looking and and, and scouring around for new talent and that sort of thing, we have learned if if you're connected with Michael Stover, you're good. We know that before we even listen. That's good. That's a great thing to hear because we we feel like we're developing a a lifelong relationship with him because he's just very affordable and very, uh, you know, organized and just he's done a great job. Well, and and exactly, exactly. He's another guy I'd like to live next door to. No kidding. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we're looking at the site, your free range uh Texan and dot net. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, uh, that's right. That's well, a good site. Well, thank you, sir. So we'll go ahead and get started here. I, I appreciate your time. Thank you for sure. doing this. It's time now for another segment of the Free Range Talent File. Brought to you by 18PR. Bringing a host of creative media production and public relations services to our exclusive list of clients. Maybe you could hire the A-Team. And now, here's the next segment of the Free Range Talent File. And now, here they are, our guests on the Free Range Talent File. Here's Sugar Cane Jane. Well, now let me try to explain what I'm feeling in a song. It's the only way. Well, I 
Ladies and gentlemen, was Feelings in a Song by my brand new friends that I am so glad to get to share with you. That's Sugarcane Jane. And uh, we have Anthony Crawford and Savannah Lee with us right now. Welcome to the Free Range Texan, y'all. Michael, thank you for having us. We're Michael. yeah, we're just loving <laughs> talking to you. Oh man, oh man, keep it up. I love it. Well, listen, y- you know, we heard you guys, and I kicked myself. I said, how could these people have existed for a number of years, and 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 we not be acquainted with these folks because your music is so real? Has anyone ever said uh, that to you before? Well, not with the beautiful voice that you have. uh, (laughs) You can only say that five or six more times and it'll be all right. (laughs) Well, it's in the schedule. (laughs) But, um, yeah, we have had a lot of people through the 11 years that we've been together as Sugarcane Jane. We've had a lot of people fall in love with our music, and, and it's been it's been encouraging and that's what's kept us going. Sometimes you, uh, don't get that and you just (laughs) go on to something else. But my secret weapon is Savannah because when she came into my life, I, uh, seemed to flourish. She was like miracle grow for me. Oh, oh, way to go Savannah. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, I'm serious. I'm serious. He's my secret weapon. So without him, I'd be toast. Well, like to say behind every bum is a good woman and that's me. She's, she's my good woman. I, 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 I toured as a side man for many years and yeah. I never did develop my own career until she came into the picture. She's a she's an organizer. Well looking at your bio, I see people like Neil Young, Steve Winwood, Dwight Yoakum. I mean, wow, man. I so, know. So I know. you were doing that kind of work. I was and I, I tell you, every time I look back at it and try to figure out how that happened is it's if you were to try to plan that out it's impossible and i think there's a lot of uh you know destiny involved in just having Mm -hmm. me be where i needed to be to meet savannah and i know that sounds a bit corny but it is true that the uh (laughs) the the best thing that i've ever done is what we're doing right now but these other accomplishments are certainly the things that i feel like they are my grammys if i were to have a piece of hardware i think playing with neil young first of all is is uh, not an easy thing to do as many shows as I was able to do with him and with Steve Winwood, what a rock and roll icon he is. Yeah. And, and Dwight Yoakam is just, I mean, you know, he's, 
just top of the heap. He's a rock and roll kind of country guy. Oh, we're big Dwight Yoakam fans around here. No doubt. <laughs> I promise Who you that. Who wouldn't be? I mean, the guy <laughs> just had a baby himself. Yeah, I think he's a little older than me, I think, or at least my age, and they just had a baby, so he is a stud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously. Way to go, Dwight. <laughs> I guess those tight pants didn't affect anything down there. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Oh, listen, it is fun to talk to a person that has been there. We were joining Dwight Yoakam in the fall of 2019 tour. I'm reading here for a moment. Uh, you were the supporting act. That means you were opening for the show? Yeah. Go ahead. We, we, we opened the show we, on his Northeast tour last year. Um he was wanting us to put a full band together. We we typically it's just Anthony and myself yeah. uh, as a duo when we go play. But uh, he really wanted a full band. He's he's got some power when he comes out with his band, and so I think that he was he was concerned that you know volume wise he needed some more energy. So we put a band together and uh, toured up the East Coast. Uh, let's see, we toured in uh, Pennsylvania wow. and uh, New Jersey. We headed up. At, we came up from out of Alabama and just kind of went through Nashville and up through uh, Ohio and then cut over. It was, a, it was a zigzaggy little deal, but we got up. Like how many? A bunch of sold out shows. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Dwight always sells out. Oh, uh, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, we opened for him and and uh, we had about maybe five shows that we got to do with him and we got a standing ovation in every one. So we knew that we were on to something. With this, this <laughs> yeah, band oh, man. And then we actually had a bunch of shows on hold with him. Uh, and then, of course, COVID happened. And oh, so yeah. Everything got put off. But yeah, it, it was pretty uh, exciting to you be know, on the road. I am continually him. talking with people all over the world, entertainers and, and recording artists, song songwriters and, and one thing another and you begin to get the feel how it is so worldwide and and you know I've worked all my life in this industry and you can always call somebody far enough away to where they're not dealing with some of the stuff that you're dealing with right there where you're at but mm. it's not like that with this whole COVID right. thing and everybody is sitting down, but you know, the beautiful thing about it. And we just began to notice this lately is that what is happening that people that wouldn't have uh, ordinarily sat down and searched their heart for days mm -hmm. and weeks and months and began writing music and creating music in their own little bubble in their Amen. world. And it that's comes right. from their heart. And there is stuff now that we are finding that's coming out everywhere that people are coming up with that they would have never slowed down and done. And they, oh, they will tell you, they will say, you know, I don't know where this comes from. A guy said that to me just the other day. I don't know where it's coming from, but man... We're doing this every day now. We're we're writing new music and 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 these great songs are coming out that are heartfelt. And we weren't exactly known for that before this, you know. Well, I tell you what, that is exactly what's going on, Michael, with us. It's you just described what happened for us. I can't identify where the thing is coming from. We call it the Holy Spirit because we have opened yeah, ourselves man. up. We've always been yeah. spiritual. But at this particular time, what happened with us was we uh, played our last show on March 15th. And from that day on, we had no future. And we actually were looking at our bank account thinking this is not going to be good. Oh, and man. what? And then we discovered Facebook Live and we did 43 shows in a row, and we called it the Hibernation Tour, which people, <laughs> you know, they still can go back to somewhere and watch it. But, oh. we, Michael, we thrived during that, and we did it all free. But people who were all sitting at home with nothing to do, remember, everybody was locked down, so musicians had the spotlight. 
if you had the ability to go live. And so we played 43 shows in a row and we made more income by going out to the studio and doing a two hour show on Facebook Live than we would have if we'd have toured because you back out of all of your expenses like we were spending $250 a day in babysitting and we were, <laughs> um, you know, spending $125 on hotels and and all of that and then just your booze cost alone (laughs) have you ever bought a beer in a bar okay (laughs) but but the fact is is we saved money on everything and and we've survived and then you take the songwriting aspect of it it just came to us in a big way and it was because we weren't on the road all the time and i was just going out to the studio once i got that first song going i wrote this complete album this ruffled feathers songs in the key of me is our new latest release and i wrote that whole album in six days i produced it i played all the instruments whatever and savannah sang her harmony and within six days we had the project finished it's Holy Spirit wow. driven. For sure. I know, I know groups that were working on an album for a year, or oh, individuals. <laughs> this, this is actually the second album that we've released since COVID happened. So we wow. released another one called Fellow Man back in June. So you know the and he's written four more since we've released this one. So there's going to be a, a volume two of, of Ruffled Feathers as well, and it'll be coming out probably this year. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned that. People need to know all that, so uh, uh, the downloads can begin. Oh, that'd be, that's awesome! <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. All right. Well, so okay. Let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to move on here. And by the way, both of you are just delightful. I'm, I'm having a ball oh, talking you, to y'all. Michael, you are too, Michael. But we're going to take a, a just a uh, we're we're going to dip away for a second, and what we're going to do is we're going to play one of your tunes. And this this is not very long, folks. This is uh, uh, this is having. I said, you know, we need to do that right in the middle of our interview, and and that's what we're going to do. But I will tell you that when I heard this, I thought, wow, who's got the guts to do something like that? The, you've got a song called. Called, that's what I see. And that's right. And when I heard that, I went, holy smoke, these guys <laughs> these guys yeah. are strong stuff, man. And and that needs to be heard. And so oh, we we're gonna play it. it. With your permission, we'll just do this right quick. Uh ladies and gentlemen, uh this is our new friends, Sugarcane Jane, and uh, a song called That's What what I see on the Free Range Texan podcast. Well, I know one thing. I am not perfect. I have my past to prove it. Should I go around pointing fingers? A hypocrite I'd be. Now, times, how can you just stand by and watch him take all the blame? I've had enough of standing on the sidelines, gonna get my skin.
Man, you are a pro, Michael. Well, this ain't hard, you know. <laughs> there, there are people who on this Monday morning are out working for a living, and I'm just so thankful I'm doing what I'm oh, doing. Oh, I know, man. Me too. I tell you what, and you're, you remind me of a guy that I used to record music for. His name was Rick Shulin, oh. and, uh, and he – he was uh, the actually the guy that was the voice over for the the uh, salsa that said, "Where's this made? New York City." New, New York, York City. City. <laughs> he was the one that said, "Get a rope, get a rope." <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tell you what he made a lot of money on that get a rope. Oh man, I, I love this guy. Yeah, I need he needs to. Teach me where to hook up for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he's up in heaven right now, but uh, I'll get him to send you a message. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, he's a good fella. And that's what we're preaching, Michael, is just tolerance. You know, uh, this election is so important. Everybody has an opinion. Some people are afraid to let their opinions be known, and we are encouraging people to stand up and be counted. There you it's go. It's important. It's yeah. important, but we're also hoping that people choose tolerance and kindness and just allow other people to have an opinion you know, without putting hate on What people. you're saying is not only something for that's important right here and right now, but it's something as Americans and uh, anywhere else in the world that can manage to bring democracy in. Uh, they, they need to be aware of that and remember that that is always true. Or That's what we say. do not want to lose with 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 this whole thing is that it, no matter who wins, whatever, you know who we're for. But I'll tell you what, what we want is somehow through this whole process of 2020, we just want some respect for the office of the presidency and just the word liable to come back into play because people say the op- most awful things about people. It doesn't even have to be true. You know, people need to be held accountable. But the one thing is we're hoping for and praying for is that people don't even feel the need or urge to do anything that's so aggressive as as, as this year has been. So we're we're hoping that the fire of of this whole thing dies down to where we can just love each other and, you know, watch a football game without any politics being involved in it and smell the barbecue of, of 4th of July. <laughs> lie without feeling like somebody's mad at you for having a flag or you know it's just a weird time right now it is very different yes and you know uh, the children are all watching kids watch how their parents react and how they talk to people and treat people and i think that we we need to really watch what we're doing you know and teach our children well teach people teach them how to respect others no matter what your opinion is. You know, I want to say something to the two of you uh, that is just in general. There's something that you and, – and I talk to a lot of people all over the world, and you don't always get this feeling. But as I interview the two of you, uh, uh, and of course, uh, I remind everybody, this is Anthony Crawford and Savannah Lee, and they are, of course, Sugar Cane Jane – And as I talk to the two of you, I realize that while both of you are great people, you are so much better together. Oh, my gosh. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we 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 really love each other. And and we're 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 kind of like two people make one. You know, we're we're two peas in the pod kind of thing. We certainly have just a a togetherness that we feel like it's of divine appointment. Of course. Yeah. And, we and met I, in Nashville, Michael, and we, you know, yeah. we're both from Alabama. I, we found out our folks lived like eight miles from each other. Oh, what Alabama. are the odds? I'm telling you. <laughs> telling you. The only difference is I was I was playing on the, the in the band with Neil Young touring Australia and when she was in first grade. <laughs> oh, man. You, you no, well, as, as you, I know it. As you get older, it doesn't seem as weird. But, uh, you know, I'm 63 now. I'm, she she and I together, I mean, we've, we've been um, making this music together. Her harmony with me is just fantastic. And, 
And so, uh, you know, we have our three children. We never have mentioned that yet, but that's the driving force in our life right now. Music is just what we do. We we just want to try to preserve freedom for our children. Well, we uh, uh, they are they are just really the driving force for our energy when it comes to getting energy and the depletion of it. They are they're you know forces to be reckoned with every day. But <laughs> that we, our our uh, oldest daughter Loretta was named after Loretta Lynn, and oh, my son my. she's she's ten, and then Levon is seven, and he was named after Levon Helm, and his middle name is Cash, huh? so he's named after Levon Helm and Johnny Cash. And then my daughter Dusty <laughs> is uh is she she was named after Dusty uh, Springfield. I wondered saying, if you were going to say that. Man. Yeah, absolutely. So they all have fantastic rock and roll names. You know, mine. I had to work for mine. Mine was like you know Smuckers. You know, <laughs> with a name like that, you got to be good. <laughs> I want to shift gears for just a second and talk to you about this song called "Wake Up." America, which just seems to fold nicely into everything that you've been talking about. But you oh, recently yeah. released this Wake Up America song. Uh, where does that come from? What's the backstory there? True uh, impetus of that song came from when I witnessed some violent behavior on television when they were showing it was either Portland or Minneapolis yeah. where these these people that owned a, a hardware store were getting beat with a two by four and it just it just went to the core of my just fear and anger towards yes. these people yes. and so you know I was just making comment in my song it's like hey you might get away with this downtown wherever you are but you bring this kind of crap out to the country and this is where you take your last breath because people out in the country and rural areas do not put up with that kind of shenanigans everybody's got a gun lots of them and they're they're ready to use them on people who are are just going out and keeping this destruction going even to this day there's still just rioting and destruction and what and i don't know where it's coming from i've got a few guesses but i'm not going to get into that but that song is all about just that kind of energy that i saw was just so wrong and it's not what america should be all about if i may i, I would like to just respond to what you just said this way I am a country boy, and having said that, I, I grew up in West Texas. In fact, when we tell people about our studio, we locate it by saying, we live out yonder. Uh, <laughs> our 18PR studios, Studio A, uh, which is ground zero for the Free Range Texan podcast, is out yonder because that's a good way to describe where sure. we're at but yeah we're way back up off in there when you we're say, way back up yeah, off in exactly. there exactly you get it but but when you said a while ago uh the fact that people who are like us are armed uh our homes are armed and and it breaks our heart to see the things that are happening. And I understand that feeling. Or oh, you boys just bring that out here and see what happens. I, I well, get that. I totally yeah, get that. But one of I the got. things that you said, and, and I want to tell you, I love you, brother, both of you. Thank you. And Thank I have you, so much respect for what you're doing and what oh, you're saying. Beautiful. But I, I want to just caution you about this. And you didn't come on this show to get cautioned. I know no, that. I do. I like caution. I like caution. But when you said we have our guns and we're ready to shoot somebody, um, I would just say <laughs> You don't get no, no, you no. Don't now get that, ready that, yo, for that. Now, yeah, you know? no, that is that is that is that is over the top. That's what the song. I was mainly saying in the song, and and art, art can take on 
more than life, as you know. Yeah. And, and, and that's that's really what that is, Michael. And I totally – I am uh, – I told Savannah, see, we just have a video that's going to come out on this song. And really? I told her, I said, yes, and I was just thinking, you know, gosh, I'm not really sure about – we're but, not violent. People. Not at all. Well, I mean, and and I don't get that from you, you know? No, we're not. But I tell you what, we will protect our family. And that's what this and is that's, about. Yeah, and it's Absolutely. not about us doing that. It's a yeah. generalization. It's a generalization. I'm speaking in this song. I'm kind of like Lee Greenwood singing, you know, God bless America, whatever. <laughs> I mean, we're singing you know, waking up America, which is just a generalization of what people are willing to do to protect their homes, especially in rural areas, because they just they're not getting that kind of thing. And they've got fair warning by watching these people. And I can probably say that most anybody that's watching it on TV thought that came through their mind was, I'd like to see them try that crap out here. That I, is, that, that's right. It is so easy to hit that gear. That's 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 exactly what I'm saying. Now, the reality of it is, do I want to pull the trigger on anything? People are not going to put up with this violence when it starts reaching the masses. You know, these are happening yeah. in cities and stuff, but you start taking it to people's homes and all that. It's just going to be a different story. And that's not a good thing. There I, is not. a time, a legitimate time for real revolution. And, but God help us if we go there. And yeah. Michael, see, we, we know that we're not the only people thinking this way because we called down to the hardware store to just see what they have. They're sold out of everything. They're sold out of guns. Wow. They're sold out of ammunition. And it's not just there. It's all over the place. Gun purchases are up like 90% from last year and they're having so, trouble getting more and i think our founding fathers if they could uh, uh, be on the podcast here with us would be the first to tell you you must always be prepared and be vigilant to protect right, your freedoms and and we for generations didn't even think twice about that well, that's what the Second Amendment is for, and that's why it's in our Constitution, and that's why we have to protect our Constitution. Uh, we want our businesses to thrive. We want small businesses. We, small businesses. We want uh, children to feel safe, to be able to, you know, walk around their neighborhoods. Um, so th that's what this is all about. And, you know, like I said, I, I don't think that we're the only people that are thinking this. Hey, Anthony. Yes, sir. She's a keeper. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. I, I married up, Michael. I did. And we, we are in love. And, it, and it's amazing to still be able to say that after 11 years of, of doing uh, maybe 1,500 to 2,000 shows together and having three kids as oh we my. did all of that. We yeah. have worked ourselves into a, a, a good spot though we 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 you know we've got a lot of growing still to do together we're excited about it and thank you for for acknowledging that well i don't think i don't think relationships should be uh that difficult you know if they are i think that you're probably with the wrong person because i don't think that i could i mean we spent 24 7 together we're just together all the time and we we get along anthony's my best friend and uh i i just can't imagine or i can imagine what life is like without him and it was very difficult in past relationships so yeah, i just wanted to because, because they weren't the right one that's right. And yeah. it's always it's always going to be wrong until it's right. And everybody deserves happiness. And if you're not happy and you got to really wake up, wake yourself up and you know, it's better to be alone and uh, find your own happiness than it is to be with the wrong person. So. You know, I would like to remind our listeners that on the Free Range Texan, as we have said a number of times before, uh, we interview people, uh, the artists themselves. We want we want to show, you know, hey, here's some of the songs, here's the stuff they're doing. Uh, but the interview is really about the person. And the thing that I notice 
When you get on an interview like this, one of the the things that is kind of a challenge for the person sitting in my chair is to be almost immediately comfortable enough with the people for them to relax and really talk about themselves. There's that feeling when you answered the phone. I mean, it's like, yes, it's it's a good feeling. Sometimes. (laughs) Sometimes you just, you know, have the opposite. But when we're doing an interview and we're working a record, we know what we want people to know about our current situation. I think they can always go back and dig up all the other songs that we've had for 11 years. But what we're really pushing right now is Ruffled Feathers, Songs in the Key of Me. And we have a new release coming out of the uh, excess songs that I wrote to uh, the batch that I wrote. Uh, is, so it's going to be called Ruffled Feathers, Songs in the Key of Me Too. Okay, yeah, and uh, all of that's available on like Apple iTunes and, and all that? Uh, yeah. They can go find your stuff? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. We haven't released the Me Too album, but uh, it, it will be available as well. Well, we sure. need to be watching for that, definitely. Well, be watching for it. We love it when people come to our website and, and buy the music you know, because it, it actually all the the uh, funding kind of comes to us and our family because on Apple and all that streaming stuff. I mean, I had two songs that I wrote with Steve Winwood and it would have like 40,000 spins and I'd make like three dollars or not even. Oh, I mean, shoot. It's, just, it's not it's not a very lucrative business we're in. But uh, one thing we would love people to know is that they can go to our Facebook and and like our page and also just go and and get affiliated with our sugarcanejane.com because we do a lot of live shows if they love our music and they want to see us do it live from our studio that's that happens all the time so just go like our facebook page and we send out little warnings of when we're doing it oh we listen also, yeah we basically have a, a full store on sugarcanejane.com i'm i'm just kind of addicted to buying high-end merchandise sorry anthony no that's good <laughs> but it's, it's, it is it's, it's very it's like the the highest quality that you can buy but and we don't make a ton of money on on the merch okay yeah. we but we we want to have really high quality so because people when, people, wear it. when people buy it they love it okay they love it and they wear it and it's got our logo or it's got ruffled feathers on it so we went all in with this record uh, because we believe in it so much. And we've had an incredible response, both positive and negative, but more positive. Yeah. So it's encouraged us to continue on. You're Americans. I Thank love you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, okay. So with your permission, what I'd like to do is for our listeners out there, I would like to play the tune that we mentioned just a while ago, Waking Up America. Here they are, Sugar Cane Jane on the Free Range Texan podcast.
You've been listening to the Free Range Talent File. If you'd like more information about our guest, just go to our website at freerangetexan.net. Also, submissions to be interviewed on the Free Range Talent File should be sent to our website at freerangetexan.net. Hi, this is Michael Sean. Have a seat at our campfire. In 1659, there was a mission called Nuestra Sonora del Guadalupe in what is now the city of Juarez, Mexico. According to legend, some of the Padres would cross the Rio Grande and work in a rich, secret gold mine in the Franklin Mountains, just north of El Paso. Every few days, the ore was loaded onto mules and hauled down the mountain to the river, where it was melted into ingots, placed on boats, and shipped to Spain. A 40-foot-tall bell tower still tops this old mission. And it is said that the entrance to the hidden mine could be seen from inside the tower. For years, the monks of the mission mined vast quantities of gold and helped them with their backbreaking labor. The monks even recruited some of the local Indians. In 1680, the Pueblo Indians of New Mexico staged a bloody uprising against the Spanish. Several of the friars managed to escape, moving quickly south along the Rio Grande. They spread the word that the Pueblo chief, Chitwa, was on the warpath, planning to put an end to Spanish rule in the area. The friars reached the mission just in time to warn the rest that the Indians were headed their way. Legend has it that the Padres loaded up their donkeys and their carts with as much gold as they could carry and made their way across the river back up through the mountains where they hid the rich treasure in the mine that it originally had been dug from. Included in their stash was a king's ransom of gold, candlesticks, chalices, and ingots. Once the treasure was safely stashed in the mine shaft, the monks actually carried silt from the river up to the mountain to fill the shaft. Then they covered the mine entrance with rocks, taking care to completely hide it from view. There are those that claim that they also left three unfortunate padres inside the mine to defend it against anyone who tried to get in. After that, the other padres returned to their mission to defend it against the impending Pueblo invasion. The plan was to return to the mine afterward to rescue the brothers they had left behind and to retrieve the riches. Little did they know that the Indian rebellion would last until 1692 and that it would be 12 years before they were able to return and recover their buried fortune. As peace finally settled over the area, some of the Padres tried to retrace their steps to the mine, only to find out that the trail had been washed away through the years. It didn't help that most of the original Padres were either dead or no longer capable of making the journey to the mountains, while the monks searched the area for the lost mine. They were never able to find it. Since then, there have been a number of attempts to locate the old mine and its treasure. People from both sides of the border continue to look periodically for the mine. 
For instance, in 1888, a fellow by the name of Robinson declared that he had figured out the location of the Lost Padre Mine. After an incredible journey up through the Franklin Mountains, Robinson's team discovered the entrance to an ancient mine that had been plugged up with reddish river silt. However, a scant few days later, his financial support was suddenly revoked, and before abandoning the site, Robinson angrily had his men fill the mine back in, once again hiding it. Years later, in 1901, there was a treasure seeker by the name of L.C. Chris. He announced to the world that he had discovered the location of the mine. Chris and his team painstakingly cleared 125 feet of the shaft. It was then he began finding some Spanish artifacts, including an ancient anvil and a Spanish spur. It was at this point that he stopped work in order to bring in some timber to shore up the dangerous passageways. But as soon as he turned his back, one overeager worker went back into the tunnel and resumed working moments after Chris had left. As the worker began to dig, the shaft, sure enough, collapsed, burying him alive. At the same time, Chris was unable to obtain further financing for his project, and the excavation was halted. He left El Paso, never to be heard from again. To this day, treasure hunters believe that the golden treasure of the Lost Padre Mine is still waiting to be found. Nestled in the rocky peaks of the untamed Franklin Mountains, still guarded by the souls of monks left behind all those years ago. They say it's all true. Those are often the best tales around our campfire. I'm Michael Sean. Adios, my friends. I would not go a step further without a big, sincere thank you. To our guest known as Sugarcane Chain. And I'll remind everybody to go to the freerangetexan.net website. There you can just click on the blog, and we've got the entire article about Sugarcane Jane and pictures, pictures, pictures of Sugarcane Jane. They also, their video that we talked about is available there, and it's, it's a fun look see. Well, you know what's fun? We got to see all of the new subscriptions to Free Range Texan that have been coming in lately. Like, for example, my old longtime friend out there living on the West Coast, a California mansion. Thanks, Bob Chaney. We appreciate it, man. Oh, that was fun to see. It's a lot of fun to think about the folks that are listening to our podcast. We uh, we hold you all in a very dear place, and thanks for subscribing. However, you choose to listen, it means a lot. I'll tell you what else is cool. We're already in touch with Gypsy Jane and working. We got a lot of stuff coming up for uh, the next Free Range Texan podcast. Gypsy Jane is going to be on that show. The whole COVID thing has sent her into, well, let's just call it four-wheel drive. She has written and produced some 
Wow, some really great stuff. And we're going to be featuring that on uh, episode 53 of the Free Range Texan Podcast. And a big thank you to our entire crew here and all the folks that make Free Range Texan happen. Take them home, sweetie pie. Thank y'all for listening to the Free Range Texan Podcast, produced at 18PR Studios out yonder in West Texas, with our host, who's been voted the hardest working man in podcasting, Michael Sean. Feedback or submissions to our program can be submitted on our website, freerangetexan.net. That's freerangetexan.net. This is Sweetie Pie. On behalf of Michael Sean and the crew here in Studio A, where we're all looking forward to spending time with you on our next episode of the Free Range Texan Podcast. Y'all come back now, you hear? An 18PR production. End transmission. That's all. Can we go now, Dad?